next stick was made in 2022 by ADIS. It is a hybrid PC input device which combines traits of gyro guns, gyro mice and joysticks. The project was funded in 2021 on the crowdfunding platform Kickstarter. The next stick is the simplified successor of the ADIS gun, which I have covered in episode 218. At its core, the next stick is a joystick top, which permanently and inflexibly connects to a white base at its bottom. Because the front and back of the base are rounded off, the next stick can be rocked in a seesaw-like motion. Horizontal movement is not as feasible while the controller is placed on a surface, because the corresponding edges aren't nearly as rounded as the vertical counterparts and thus, in the normal use case, the player would lift up the next stick completely to make full use of it. Apparently, the next stick was designed with an international audience in mind and I am pleased to report that it will also accommodate large hands well. It is, however, a right-handed design. The matte smooth texture, which covers the whole unit, is pleasant to touch. At the index finger are two microswitch based triggers on top of a trigger guard, which separates the remaining fingers from those buttons. The lower button acts as left mouse click, whereas the upper one acts as right click. On top of the generously sized thumb cutout is an analog joystick, which controls the mouse wheel. Sadly, with the current soft and firmware, it is just treated as a digital input and they adjust at its two vertical directions. What personally annoys me the most on the wall device is that although the joystick can be depressed to click a button, this isn't mapped to anything and moreover nothing at all is mapped to the third mouse button. In my mind, this severely challenges the mouse use case of the wall unit. At the face side is a diamond cluster of four buttons. These are labeled using the PlayStation nomenclature. It strikes me as an odd design choice that those buttons are aligned to the right hand side of the faceplate, which demands the thumb to travel farther to reach them. The gyro cutoff button, which is located at the bottom of the faceplate, is placed a bit more sensible, but considering how normal it is for a gyro controller to lose zero and to demand frequent adjustment thereof, the placement still isn't optimal. All the faceplate buttons are based on push button switches. A grip safety like looking piece at the handle is the rattle based force feedback of the next stick, which is set up using the latching switches at the top of the base. When all buttons are up, force feedback is off. Pressing one button down will toggle between single shot and full automatic mode. When both buttons are down, the next stick pays attention to special force feedback commands which are sent via Bluetooth using the provided software development kit. The force feedback is fast, not too loud, but quite weak. Considering that a strong force feedback would contribute to gyro drift and the loss of the zero position, I am quite stoked about the present degree of strength and I find myself turning force feedback on frequently. The next stick is powered by an internal battery, which can either be recharged via the USB-C socket or wirelessly. The force feedback will start to act strange if the battery is too depleted or if the battery wasn't charged with sufficient current. In this state, full auto fire acts more like burst fire and sometimes short events are ignored. I recommend at least 2 ampere and to use the original charging cable. The very short sides assembly on top of the next stick can be removed and inserted into the base for storage. The freed up top slot can then be used to attach a camera shoe mount onto which the user can screw a cellular phone holder which allows the player to use the next stick on AR games, similarly as I have shown in episode 194. Those adapters have to be bought independently and don't come with the otherwise generous shipping contents. My particular unit was accompanied by a USB flash drive, a Bluetooth dongle, a wireless charger, a USB-A prolongation cable and a USB-C cable. Upon switching the next stick on, it calibrates itself to account for the local terrestrial magnetic field. This process takes up to 5 seconds, during which the controller must be placed on a non-moving flat surface. In order to use the next stick on PC, two programs have to be executed. One for establishing a connection to the computer and another one to translate the Nextic information to mouse inputs. Installation of the Nextic software creates Windows scheduler entries, a practice of which I'm not a big fan. 
In the translation software, the four buttons can be remapped to single keys or string phrases. All other inputs can't be reassigned. In another tab, the sensitivity of the gyro sensor can be adjusted. Next, I would like to cover each of the advertised use cases. I start with the most important one, PC gaming. As I explained in great detail before in my reviews, Gyro guns will never give the player a light gun-like experience considering the low accuracy, low precision, high dependence on user to screen angle and distance and most severely the constant drift of the zero position which requires frequent recalibration thereof. Furthermore, are gyro guns usually set up as a relative input device which inherently loses the zero position once the player attempts to navigate over the screen limits. Still, if one accepts the next stick for what it is, which is a gyro gun, there is much fun to be had. I enjoyed it very much on games, which don't support absolute mouse positions and therefore I wouldn't be able to play with a gun controller otherwise. Compared to other gyro guns I own, the next stick performed very well. I would compare its tracking quality to the one of the ADAS gun. Once again, I feel there's a higher degree of drifting along the horizontal axis when I play from a stance, which allows my elbow to lean against something. While the ADIS gun left the player the choice of using the controller in an absolute or relative manner, the next stick just works in a relative fashion. Overall, I don't like that the second trigger has to be operated with the index finger, which I would prefer to keep resting on the main trigger instead that I have to let go most of the grip in order to retract the thumb far enough to reach the gyro cutoff button also is a major annoyance. As PC mouse, the sensitivity of the next stick has to be decreased considerably. This is necessary because many programs and websites won't recognize mouse clicks when they are accompanied by sufficient movement, as then the action is considered a terminated micro drag and drop event instead. Most people are unaware of this issue until they use the first motion-based mouse device. Sadly, the next stick won't register any button presses while the gyro cutoff is engaged. This would have been a very elegant workaround which would have preserved the cursor speed. Alternatively, a dedicated mouse option in the next stick GUI would have been nice which would ignore all subtle movements up to an adjustable threshold and just react to pronounced movements much like a joystick dead zone can be set up. Whereas the Nextix predecessor the ADIS gun connected to the computer via wireless LAN, the Nextix depends on Bluetooth, which fits the more user-friendly theme of the Nextix. It will readily connect to most Bluetooth 4 dongles and onboard Bluetooth antennas, but won't be immune to the common problem of Bluetooth interference when multiple clients or antennas are nearby. Sadly, I wasn't able to connect the next stick to a smartphone in a stable manner. I tried Android 9 and 10 but didn't succeed with either. In my tests, the next stick is visible to those devices, pairs, but then immediately unpairs again. The support of ADIS was responsive but not able to provide me a solution. They sent me a video, however, which shows them successfully connecting a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 5G. Personally, I have the impression that the native connection issues isn't a priority of theirs, because they are developing a dedicated Nextic mobile app right now, intended to handle pairing and input mapping in the future. If the Nextic was working the same on mobile as it does on PC, I would assume that its behavior to ignore button inputs once the gyro cutoff is engaged would be among the most glaring issues. It would make the setup of button mapping apps like Octopus very cumbersome because it would pick up the gyro information rather than the to be programmed buttons in many cases. On VR games, the next stick tracked surprisingly well considering it's just a gyro gun. As it has to be expected, the game has no means to know the distance between the player and the gun and thus the in-game gun will always move along an invisible sphere around the player. Also keep in mind that the library of games which support gyro guns is very small. The demo game Zombie Halloween, which is shipped together with the next stick, makes use of the SDK and is therefore capable of advanced tracking, force feedback interaction and screen center zeroing. In a VR play space, which has lots of wireless communication going on, the superiority of wireless LAN over Bluetooth was evident. 
Whereas in the same setup, the Aedes gun worked flawlessly, the Nextic occasionally suffered tracking issues, possibly due to interferences. A direct compersion of the two controllers in VR is difficult though, as Zombie Halloween has been reworked for the Nextic and ran notably less smooth on my computer than the predecessor version did. Personally, I like the Nextic. People who look for a quality gyro gun controller, which is standalone, readily available, user friendly and backed by support, can't go wrong with it. Personally, as somebody who doesn't shy away from tinkering, prefer the Aedis gun, which I can screw to controllers such as the PP gun mini. People who don't mind abysmal support and a terrible feeling trigger, which is prone to break, should look into the Desert Wolf controller, which has a fair share of positive sides too. I love that the Nextic incorporates joystick traits, as this reminds me of one of the very first gyro gaming controllers, the Cyberstick, which was made in 1997 by Cyberstuff. The latter can be considered the spiritual predecessor of gyro guns in general and was used in the past era of virtual reality gaming. The Nextic retail box looks very appealing. On the matte front, some items were given a glossy top layer. All features, the specifications and some use cases are introduced on the box in great detail. The cyan and black color scheme reminds me a bit of Logitech. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.